Well, amen. After all that, I'm ready to preach the word of God. First of all, we gotta, we, we've had a already an incredible service. We've got to thank Frank, not only for the great song leading, for the incredible contribution speech. And you guys can do a little bit better than that. We've got to thank Frank for... And, uh, I mean, let me tell you something. Tommy Wise is ready to go. You know a man is ready to go. See, we as disciples, we, we, we really believe that what we teach, these scriptures, they're not just stuff we say, it's in our heart. And there's nothing better than, than to have someone ask you to share your heart right on the spot. That'll tell you where you're really at. And so Tommy Wise shared today, and he shared the, the communion, what the cross means to him. And of course, he, he was just asked right before, right before service today. Why? Because we produce true disciples with true convictions that are truly in all of our hearts. Incredible job today. Uh, I'm encouraged when we have disciples visiting from all around the world. We have Naama Armstrong from New York City. She's here with us today. We got Asanet from Florida. She's with us today. We've even got an incredible couple that's all the way from Brazil they're visiting with us today. Of course, my best friend lives in Brazil, and uh, dare we say, one of our strongest churches in our movement is in Brazil, where we have several USP students that are sold out disciples, including a former USP student that's going to be here next week, that's Luca, to preach the word of God. You know, today uh, I, I was trying to think of what we need to talk about, but then I, I started thinking about all the stuff that we've talked about over the last week. And uh, I, I thought about Tommy Wah's speech that he gave a few weeks ago, and it was a powerful speech talking about your commanding officer. And how Tommy Wah highlighted that you cannot command if you're not commanded. Meaning that you need someone in your life commanding you. Are you with me here? And that was an incredible charge. I know he's going to be a great commanding officer in Amsterdam. I thought about a charge I gave our staff where I talked about the fact that we are all in a, in a race, a race that's marked out for us. Of course, that's Hebrews chapter 12. And I talked about how in a race, a relay race, everyone gets a baton and you pass the baton and you pass it to the next person, they run. You pass the next person, they run. You pass it, and then you sit there, the first guy who passes it, he waits for the last guy to finish the race. And I highlighted how Christianity is not passing of a baton. Because in a passing of a baton, you shut down. <laughs> Soon as you give it to the next guy, you just shut down and watch him run. That is not Christianity. That is not our church, that is not our movement. We don't pass batons, we pass torches. We pass torches. See, in the Olympic Games, it's the torch that gets lit, then it passes it on to the next runner, and dare we say, he lights somebody else on fire. But he himself is still on fire. Are you with me right here? And that's what's happening with Amsterdam. We're passing a torch. They're going to, they're going to let Amsterdam, they're going to light it on fire over there. I thought about an incredible lesson that we heard at our International College of Christian Ministries, our first session by Kobe Gray. Of course, that message was called The Dream. And he highlighted how Jesus had a dream. I know it's Black History Month here in the UK. I can't say that. You may have not noticed I am black. And of course, when I think about having a dream, everyone knows that Martin Luther King had a dream. But long before Martin Luther King had a dream, Jesus had a dream. And many people believe that Jesus got more controversial the closer he got to the cross. But Kobe highlighted how in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says when he said all the good stuff, oh, they praised him. He's awesome. But as soon as he got controversial and said, I'm the one man in the one church with the one dream, the only person on the face of the earth with a dream to evangelize the nations in one generation. I'm the only guy with that dream. You know what people said? They, they tried to kill him. They took him to the edge of a hill to throw him off to kill him, Luke chapter 4. But you know what? And I've never seen this. I've read that scripture so many times. The Bible says Jesus walked straight through. 
I like that part, kind of like the Terminator. He just walks on through. <laughs> Can't be stopped. But what's so powerful is, is just that. The, why did he walk straight through? Because no one had the power to stop Jesus. No one. That means if you are with Jesus, no one has the power to stop you. You know, uh, the last time we had our congregational service, the lesson was in, simply entitled, Baptize People. Yeah. And we talked about how Jesus baptized people. We talked about how his disciples baptized people. We talked about how the first century church baptized former preachers. We talked about what it really means to baptize the nations. In the North region, we talked about going the extra mile. You know, Jesus says you got to go the extra mile. In Matthew chapter 5, it simply says, hey, if someone, wants you, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him another. Of course, we would learn that it was the Jewish, it was the, uh, the custom of the Romans to enslave the Jews back then and, may, and force them to go one mile. They would force the Roman soldiers, or they would force the Jews, the Romans would force the Jews to carry their luggage, to carry their bags. So not only do you have this nation that's subverting you and that's like taking over your nation, you're a Jewish boy and you've got to carry the bags of this Roman soldier for a mile. You're ticked off. You want somebody to help out. You know this Messiah guy is going to come on the scene someday. And then finally he shows up. His name is Jesus. And he says, Jesus, I've got to carry it one mile. Jesus goes, carry it another mile. Yeah. Don't carry it one mile. Go the extra mile. See, that's where that comes from. And of course, if you were Jewish and you love God... You would go the extra mile. See, we as disciples, when we really love God, we'll go the extra mile. And that extra mile, I called it the smile mile. That's that mile you don't want to go. But you just put on that smile. And if you were Jewish, you looked at that Roman soldier and you went, okay, I'm just going to. And if you were Roman, you went, wow, what God do you worship? Maybe I will study the Bible since you're going the extra mile. You know, you always got to ask yourself, what would the extra mile do for your relationships? Beginning with God. But that's not the title of the lesson today. <laughs> the title of the lesson is simply four levels of fruitfulness. Four levels of fruitfulness. Well, first of all, the church was fruitful. We had another marriage last night. We had an incredible marriage. And, uh, you know, it, it's awesome when you see disciples get married. You know, that first kiss is sometimes you're just like, whew, there's, there's a lot going on right here. It's like, okay, amen, amen. Glad only 60 people were invited to this one right there. That was a, that was a kiss for the ages. Um, amen. But Haven and Natasha got married. Haven and Natasha got married. That's a good thing. Why? Because we're showing godly offspring in the kingdom of God. A lot of people getting married nowadays. And you know, I shared a great scripture with them. Uh, I shared with them Genesis chapter 2. Uh, and of course in Genesis chapter 2, that's where Adam leaves. You know, God creates Adam. He has to name all the animals. Remember, you know how it goes. He starts naming everybody. He gets depressed. You know, hip he's fired up at first. Hippopotamus, orangutan. And then he gets depressed. He's like, dog. <laughs> Cat. That's probably how he did it too, you know. Rat, you know, he probably got depressed. And then God causes him to fall asleep. And I shared the scripture with him last night. And after he falls asleep, he, he, he takes one of his ribs. Of course, the rib would be the fifth rib. It's the rib that guards the heart. Yeah. See, 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 you, you want a woman that guards your heart. And my wife loves to be prudent. I don't like to be prudent. She's always guarding my heart. I don't like the guarding all the time. But she's sent to me by God. <laughs> So it's a good thing. But then what's cool is it says in verse 22, then the Lord God made the woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. Now, the word made is what is used in the English uh, translations here. But uh, some translations say the Lord fashioned. Oh, yeah. I think women probably like that one even better. <laughs> the Lord fashioned me. <laughs> right? Well, that's what some translations say. So you can go with that one, sisters. Amen. Yeah. It says the Lord fashioned the woman out of the rib he had taken from the man. Now, the cool thing about the word fashion is the Hebrew meaning 
fashion is to be built. So it says the Lord built the woman. But we know what Mark chapter 7 verse 37 says. We know that, right? Oh, maybe we don't. That one says that Jesus did everything well. He sang well, preached well, taught well. He did everything. He gave well. So if God created woman, he fashioned woman, he built woman, that tells you she was well built. I just thought I'd share that one with you right there. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Four levels of fruitfulness. You can call it that or you can entitle the message, there's no business like soul business. Proverbs chapter 11. I can say that. I was in the film and TV industry. I left it for the Lord. And here we are. Saving souls. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 30. The Bible reads... There is no verse 30. <laughs> Psalms chapter 1. <laughs> We're going to go to the next one. Psalms chapter 1. Maybe the Lord wants me to speed up. <laughs> Psalms chapter 1. We'll go to the beginning of Psalms. See what they have to say about fruitfulness. The psalmist says here in verse 1. I like how he separates things on out. It says, blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. Or sit in the seat of mockers. Isn't that crazy? Where are the mockers? Sitting. Isn't that crazy? They're not doing nothing. They're just sitting there mocking everybody that's doing something. Criticizing, critical, finding all the problems. He says sit in the seat of mockers. But... His delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. Amen. Are you delighted by the Bible? I love the word of God. Amen. Says his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Well, what's he like? Hmm, it says he is like a tree. Planted by the streams of water. I mean, this guy's in the right place. Planted by the streams of water, the living water. There's a lot of water out there. We live in London, there's a lot of water, right? <laughs> but he says he's planted by the living water. You know, sadly, before I become a Christian, I, I didn't know anything about the living water. I was more focused on the, 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 the toilet water, <laughs> the impure water. I wasn't born again, so it was porn again. I pray that's not you. Because it'll stop you from being fruitful. If you get that false intimacy of pornography. Says, no, this guy's not planted by the internet. He's not planted online right there. No, he's, he's planted by the living water. The streams of water. Which yields its fruit in season. And whose leaves wither. Right about 5.30, right on a 10 to 5. No. Says, no, whose leaves do not wither. Some of the things he does prospers. Nope, not when you're by that living water. Whatever he does prospers. And then it gives a great contrast so everybody can know where you're at. <laughs> he says, not so the wicked. <laughs> they are like shaft. You know how shaft is, you can blow it anyway. That the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And the church said, I love this scripture right here. It shows a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. One tree is well located, close to God, delights in the law of the Lord. One tree is well planted, deep convictions in their heart. I pray you have deep convictions on the word of God. One tree is well watered, 
thirsting for the word of God, thirsting to be close to God. You know, all the answers to your life are in the Bible. And I, I've convinced myself very clearly, if I've not found a scripture to lead me through a situation, it's because I'm not seeking God with all of my heart. There's a scripture to meet every single need in your life. If you're thirsting for that living water. It says this tree doesn't wither. Weariness is not an option for this tree. And it's great because in Hebrews 12, it says, hey, don't get weary. Why? Because Jesus never got weary. Isn't it interesting that Jesus never got weary? And then, of course, I love the fact that it talks about the mockers who are just doing nothing but sitting. I know nobody wants to leave here and be made into a mocker today. <laughs> no, I don't want to be a mocker. That means you can't just sit and watch. You got to engage and get into the game. Let's get into the four levels of fruitfulness. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I love the book of John. It doesn't even talk about miracles. It calls them signs. You go through the book of John, it doesn't say he did all these miracles. He did signs. Why does he call them signs? Because sign, signs point to something greater than the miracle itself. Signs point to God. That's why the book of John is all about pointing to God. John chapter 15. I believe miracles point to God. When we show fruitfulness, it points to God, what God is doing. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. Notice he doesn't say, I am a vine. Doesn't say, I am the vine. He makes a mention that there's a false vine that's out there. He says, I am the true vine. If there's a true vine, there's a false vine. Yeah. That means you can be rooted. You can be attached to something that is not God. I am the true vine. My father, my father is the gardener. This is challenging. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Woo. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So that it will be even more fruitful. That one's a challenging one too. Because even if you're fruitful and God's cutting stuff out of your life, you're like, ow, this hurts. But you may be fired up. At least you're in the number of fruitful because he's pruning you. <laughs> Taking stuff away. He says, You've already, you're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Isn't that awesome? Apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, nothing's going on. It's because you're apart from me. If anyone does not remain in me, it's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to the London International Christian Church's glory. This is to the movement of God's glory. No, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And the church said, this is amazing right here. I just love this text. He says, I am the true vine. He says, you got a lot of fake vines that are out there. He says, don't attach yourself to something that, that is not the truth. You know, if you get attached to something that's not the truth, it could affect your entire life. You say, well, you know, I've, I've, I've been attached to the vine a lot. I've been attached to a lot of different churches and they're all you know not really real well maybe the question may be you may not have been attached to the real vine and if you're not attached to the real vine it may be because you're not a real disciple a true disciple that's what I had to realize i had been attached to a few different churches not very fruitful at all why because I wasn't really a true disciple and it wasn't really the true vine it says he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit why? Because, you know, when a tree has a disease, you got to cut off the part that will kill the rest of the tree. And what's interesting here is it isn't the preacher who does it. It isn't John the Apostle. This is God himself. God says, hey, you're not fruitful. I cut you off. 
I started looking at this, and we're going to get to the levels here in a second. I just want to pick it apart right here, kind of like a, a, a piece of chicken. Kind, kind, kind of like, like Ola with a piece of chicken. Better yet, Ola with some curry goat. Ola can turn those bones into a whistle. It's like, was that meat on that bone? Is that a whistle? Is that a monument? Is that an archaeological artifact to verify the Bible? No, that's Ola's plate. He just ate those bones right there, and he just got to go, I love Ola. That's my brother. That's my friend right there. I'm giving him a hard time. I'm a little bit telling the truth, though, though. Amen. I was looking at this here, and I was looking at the branches. And it says, he cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. And um, I thought about that. And I thought, how are houses built? They're not built with branches. You cannot build a house with a branch. So I was like, okay, you can't build a house with a branch. What can you do with a branch? Well, what's the Bible say? It says they're picked up, thrown into the fire, and they burn. Okay. All right. So I've got a couple of options here. I'm either bearing or I'm burning. Hmm. The branch is used for two things. Bearing or burning. I know you guys saw that. I just want to bring it up again, though. I was convicted by that. Because branches aren't used to build houses. They're used to start fires. You can start an awesome fire with a bunch of branches, can't you? You can get some great branches going. You get the good fire. Fiery persecution can come. That comes from branches. Fiery criticism, that comes from branches. Sitting down, mocking. Fiery, all that kind of fiery stuff. That, that, but the problem with that kind of fire is it just leads to hell. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. Hell is a scary place. It's eternal fire. Forever. It's like being barbecued forever. Like eternally being barbecued by yourself. Now, hell shouldn't be our only motivation, but let me tell you something. In the world that we live in, we need to make sure hell is a motivation. He says the branch is used for either bearing or burning. That's the only two things that you gather those branches to do. And I think about the fact that Jesus says, hey, bear much fruit. Show yourselves to be my disciples. Bear much fruit. And I start thinking about people in the Bible. I think about Martha. Martha was serving. Mary was sitting. Martha was worrying. Mary was worshiping. Martha was hurrying, anxious. Mary was hearing. Martha was laboring. Mary was learning. Martha was bothered. And Mary was blessed. And I, I read this and I go... This is, this is, we as a church got to attach ourselves to the vine and just get focused on being fruitful. <laughs> Why? Because we want to show ourselves to be disciples and we want God to be glorified. Now, what are the levels of fruitfulness? Let's look at John chapter uh, 15, verse 2. It tells you the first level. It says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's the first level. That's the first level of fruitfulness. No fruit. <laughs> so what level I tell you? I ain't, I'm no fruit. That's where I'm at. That's kind of a good thing. It's not a good thing in the long term. But the powerful thing about having no fruit is now you get to go bear some fruit. Are you with me here? At least you're not in the pruning process. Because that only comes at the level where you've been fruitful. So you don't have to worry about any pruning. All you have to worry about is just focusing in and going and making a disciple. Yeah. Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. Pornography, three times a day. Alcohol, every single night. I even started drinking to try to stop thinking about what I was doing. So bitter, I couldn't forgive my mom until she was literally dying on her deathbed. That's how bitter I was at the things that had gone on in our life. Bitter as gall. Unfaithful. Not a faithful man. Cheated on every single woman I, I, I claimed to love. Wicked man. And you know what? God sorted me out. 
He cleaned me up, dusted me off, gave me a family, gave me a vision, gave me a purpose, gave me the kingdom. I'm fired up about that. I'll never stop being fired up about that. And I want everybody to know. I want everybody to know you can change. If I can change, you can change. I want people to know. I want the atheists in Europe to know you can know God. God can change your life. I've never brought up, a, good you weren't brought up as an atheist, or, or, or as a Christian, that's better. I like talking to atheists better now because they don't have all these doctrinal things that are just trapping them from seeing the truth. They're just like, what is the Bible? They're just, they, don't, they have no foundation that you have to deal with. That's why I like Luke Snow. Luke Snow is awesome. He was an atheist, now he's a sold out disciple training to be an evangelist. I'm like, Luke, it says this right here. Luke goes, oh, okay. Luke, go make disciples. Make disciples? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> you just, that's it. Very simple. You making disciples? Well, we had 50 studies in the north. We haven't got a baptism yet, but I'm still going after it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, we got that first level. No fruit. Where are you? Are you at that level? Where there's just no fruit. Um... This is not a good level to stay at, even though that's a level that some of us are at. But it's a great level sometimes because then, then, then you can get out of that level and then you can be fruitful. Amen. Don't you want to tell people what Jesus has done in your life? Yes. Don't you want people to know what Jesus has done in your marriage? How Jesus helped you? How Jesus has given you children or family or kids? Or how Jesus pulled you out of depression? Jesus pulled you, how the word of God healed you of this? How you didn't need to go take Prozac? You didn't need to go to strip club and do these, to, to all these kind of bad things. How you can party and do it without being drunk? You should have been at the wedding last night. You would have thought everybody was drinking. No, we were just fired up for Jesus. We were in there dancing and everything. I tried to stay out of it. They made me get out there again. And I just had to get out there, go like this. I'm like, hmm. Partying for the Lord right there. No alcohol, no drugs. Just love for God. Happy that we're saved. Happy that our, our brother and sister who wore white lived a life that matches their conviction. That their first kiss was the one that we saw. It was a deep one, but it was the one we saw. <laughs> Are you with me there? That white dress meant something, purity. Don't you want to tell people what God has done for you? If you say yes, then why not? Why aren't you fruitful? This is beyond just, hey, we got to be fruitful. No, don't you want to tell people what God has done? I want to challenge you. If, you've got, if you're at that level, I, I want to challenge you to just devote your, just, just get focused in on getting out of that level of no fruit. Verse 2 tells us the next level is what I think says, he cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit, while every branch that bears, uh, he cuts off every branch of me that, be, branch of me that bears no fruit, that's the first level, while every branch of me that bears fruit. Huh. That's the second level. Some fruit. So you got no fruit, now you got some fruit. You say, I've been fruitful. Are you fired up about the, how fruitful you've been? You know what I mean? It's awesome when you bear. See, it's very quiet here. Yeah. It's very quiet here today. That's the reason why we need this lesson. Because we need to bear some fruit. We need to get out of the no fruit and start bearing some fruit. You can't fake bearing fruit. You either bear fruit or you can't do it. They either get baptized and they baptize somebody or they get baptized and they take off. The second level is bearing some fruit. That's, that is, that's, that's a good thing. Now, how does this apply to me? I got to bear churches. We've done some churches, but we haven't done enough. But we're going to Amsterdam at the end of this year, or at the end of this month, rather. And we're going to plant a church. And then next year, we're going to Scotland with Kobe and Rebecca. We're going to plant another church. We're going to get some fruit going on over here. That's for me. That's mine. That's mine. I got my church challenge. I'm in the some fruit category. Some churches. Come on, bro. That's me. How about you? We're in this together, right? Yeah. Where, 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 how about you? 
You know, you say, hey, I'm not a Christian. Hey, you can be fruitful. You can study the Bible and get baptized and be fruitful with yourself. <laughs> you can go, I'm fruitful. I, I got saved. I got baptized. I'm fruitful now. Then you can move out of that level and you can get to the next level. Isn't it awesome? There's levels to this. You get to the, to, to, to the next level. You can start trying to bear some fruit. I remember when I first came around, it was awesome. I studied the Bible. I got baptized. And you know how it is when you come around, they give you a songbook and they pay for everything. They say nice things and they encourage you and they tell you how great you're going to be and you're amazing and you're going to do great things for God. They meet you at the door, give you a side hug and ask you how it's been. And, and then after, after those 40 days of testing, <laughs> then things change. Then all of a sudden it's like, hey, bro, can you go hand that person a songbook what are you doing here so late where's your visitor and the relationship changes now that's for the person that doesn't understand you were you were you were saved to serve see that was a sermon that I used to hear from everybody who was unfruitful they would tell me man it's changed used to, I'm not feeling loved anymore what's well, not about you you selfish person. God's going to cut you off. You need to leave. You need to be here to serve people, help people. Some food. That's next. Let's get to the next, next level. Okay? Okay. We got the no fruit. We got that one, right? We got the some fruit. Let's get to the next one. It says, while every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it would be even more fruitful. That's the next level. More fruit. You know what happens when you've had some fruit? You're going to hear a lesson saying, you need more fruit. You say, I've been fruitful. That's awesome. We need more fruit. You know why? Because we need to plant a church in Ireland. Because while everybody's so anxious about the Brexit, oh, we're going to lose Scotland, we're going to use the UN. We aren't going to lose Scotland and the UN. We're going to send churches there. Because they're going to be in the United Kingdom, the kingdom of God. That's why we need more fruit. We need an awesome Irish guy to study the Bible. How you doing? We got an awesome Irish guy here. He studied the Bible. He's awesome. He's a leader, guys. Pressure him to become a Christian. Give him hugs. Love up on him. See, we, we, we make, we, we, we don't, we don't. We want to persuade as many people to join this family, yeah. to experience the love, the healing, and to get a vision for their life. Yeah. Isn't it awesome that your life matters? Yeah. See, not as a non-Christian, but as a disciple, your life matters. Yeah. You, you've got a purpose. You've got a calling. And if you've borne some fruit, God wants more fruit. Yeah. More fruit. Yeah. Let's look at the next level. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. There it is. Woo! No fruit, some fruit, more fruit, much fruit. There's the levels. No fruit. Some fruit. More fruit. And then much fruit. This is the level that we need to get to. Now, here's the awesome thing about the movement of God. Had we not had this conviction to bear much fruit. We wouldn't be where we're at today. Do you realize that the church you're a part of right now that you're sitting in started with 25 people in, in, in Portland, Oregon with a dream. 25 people that said, we're going we're gonna to dream to evangelize the entire nations in our generation. We're going to go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything for the sake of the gospel. That's what we're going to do. Those 25 produced 42 in L.A. Those 42 have now produced over 100 churches on all six populated continents of the globe. We have over 7,000 sold out disciples around the world coming from 25 people. That's a lot of fruit right there. I'm going to give you a couple of challenges to bear more fruit. First of all, I want to challenge you to crank your personal example. Go after your personal example. Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. Just a couple more and we'll close out.
Let's look at Jesus' example. How often did Jesus go after it? Verse 34. It says, be careful of your hearts, or they'll be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and the day will come on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is, going to ha that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Isn't this crazy? How often did Jesus share his faith? Day. Daily. Daily. Amen. You know what we say? Can't share my faith daily. You don't understand. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. Marriage is Lord right now. You don't understand. I, I, can't, I can't share my faith. I'm studying. I'm, learn I'm in uni. I can't reach out. Don't put any pressure on me. Even though the highest education is this education, the education of God. Yeah. We get distracted. We don't share daily. And Jesus' personal example was so convicting. Because every day he was sharing his faith. Every day he's teaching. Every day he's going after it. I want to lift up Frank. I want to lift up Frank. Frank shares his faith like a vending machine. Like a vending machine. I'm serious. You know how to do it. Just it's come down. Right. Quick. Boom. Quick, 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 quick. We'll be having D time. And I'll say, hey, Frank, how you doing? Yeah. It's Phew. Hey, man, I just want. And he just goes after it. They say no. He goes, ah, hey, man. Goes to the next person. They say yes. Okay, give me your number. Boom. Where's the next Frank? Where's the next female Frank? Yeah. Yeah. Who, wants to, who wants to be married to a preacher? You know what someone told me one time? They said, bro, can you help me have a dating relationship? I said, sure. I said, I got this awesome brother. He'll be awesome. He loves to share his faith. He's bold. He's confident. He loves the word of God. He's a preacher. They said, oh, does he come with a cup? So what do you mean? Does he come with a cup? Well, you know how Jesus says you got to drink the cup? So you can't be a disciple if you haven't drank the cup. So discipleship comes with a cup. Are you with me right here? But we all have to have the heart to want to drink the cup. To be married to the individual that can get you to heaven. And I want to lift him up. I, I think he's done an amazing job. I want to lift up Christine as well. Yeah. Working a full-time job and sharing her faith like crazy. Sharing her faith like crazy. And then, of course, today, I, I got to lift up my wife. Yeah. Just going after it. Nasi is going to be baptized today. Yeah. And, and Nasi, she wrestled with the scriptures right there. I can tell. I saw that she had that wrestling look on her face right there. <laughs> but now she's, she understands this is her call. And it's awesome that we've got those awesome sisters that are going after it. But I think if we're really going to really be the church that God wants us to be, we've got to go after our personal example. Yeah. Just, just ask yourself, when's the last time you got advice on how to be fruitful? When's, your last, when's the last time you got advice on how to help someone become a Christian? When's the last time you wanted input on how to help somebody know the Lord? When's the last time you wanted to help somebody who was a Mormon, who believes in Mormon? Of course, the Mormons believe that you can't be a part of their church if you are a person of color. I, I, I don't think that's very fair, but... That's the reason why I follow Jesus Christ. It's the wrong branch to be attached to. When's the last time you wanted input on how to, how, to, how to train to be a preacher? When's the last time you said, hey, can I come to the staff meeting if I'm fruitful? When's the last time you as a member said, hey, how can I use my talents to be fruitful? When is the last time you as a member said, how can I write a book on how to help people know God in this way and that way? We just got to be a militant army focused on saving souls. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That really is all that matters. There's three things that last forever. God, the word of God, and the souls of men. 
you can't take your MacBook Pro to heaven. <laughs> and my personal discouragement, I can't take jello fries to, to uh, I like to take some jello fries. I'm not, I, I'm wondering if I'm Nigerian nowadays. I'm like, am I Nigerian? I could be. I like this jello fries. I can't take it to heaven though. You can't take it. You can't take Manchester United to heaven. <laughs> Get rid of the jersey. And Chelsea fans, you're making fun of them. Get rid of your, your jerseys as well. You're not taking those Chelsea jerseys. You may not make it in if you come up with the Chelsea jersey. You've got to be clothed with the, the, the robes of righteousness. Here's the point. I don't want to offend everybody. Like your football club. Great. I'm talking about understanding that we, we as a church have to be focused on being fruitful. Baptizing people. Helping people know the Lord. You'll be happier. You'll be happier. Don't you feel good after you come out of a great Bible study? You spend time and you help someone know where they can heal, where, they can, where, where their pain has a purpose. I mean, didn't you love that, what Tommy Watt said today? Yeah. Burn it as fuel for the journey? You know, so many people have had so much suffering and pain, they think it means nothing. Wow. If you're here today, you may have suffered. Your pain has a purpose. Yeah. It has a purpose. In Genesis chapter 50, Joseph says, hey, you intended to harm me? God intended it for the good. The saving of many lives. His pain was to produce fruit. Isn't that awesome? But if we all aren't focused, we all aren't unified. And this is what we got to be, guys. Now, we got the EMC coming up. I'm going to challenge you. Just as I challenge the staff, do something radical. I want to challenge you to fast to be fruitful. See, there's no amens on that part. I want to challenge you to fast to be fruitful. See, Michael Ocho is smiling at me. Okay, all right. I want to challenge you. Go after it. Get radical this week. Say what you need to say. Do what you need to do. Cut off what's... You say, I've been fruitful. Let God prune you. You know, pruning is stuff that gets cut off. God cuts off not only bad stuff, but you know what he also cuts off? Good stuff. He can actually cut off something good in your life so that you can be more fruitful. I learned that one. I remember being in L.A. right before we come to plant the church here. I was like, Kip, I'm going to go into ministry. He goes, amen. I go, but, you know, I got a, I got a, I got a job offer. He goes, okay, great, but we, we established that the Lord has called you into the ministry. I go, absolutely. And absolutely, I'm going to go. But I got this job offer. <laughs> and uh, it's not, he goes, how much? I go, it's about, well, it's, well, they're going to give me a base salary of about 100000 And I thought I could help the contribution a little bit right there in the church. I, th I thought I could, it's a good thing, right? Good thing. You know what Kip said? I hear him like he's saying it to me. He goes, what do you think the Lord wants you to do? <laughs> I'll start next week. Amen. So that's the reason why I have compassion on, on Frank from running for the call of God, because I did the same thing. But now Frank's not running from the call of God, he's cranking the call of God. You got to go after your personal example. You got to go after your personal example. You got to confront the idol. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15, it says, warn the idol. Not encourage the idol. Where are you idle? What are the areas in your life you're just not going after it? It, it may not be sharing your faith. It may be follow-up. Maybe that one. That's the one where I can't really preach real strong, hard right now. I'm just going to, I'm going to call you to repent as I repent. Follow-up. I talk to people, a lot of people every day. Follow-up. I got to follow-up. And warning. You got to warn the idol. You, you, you got to take it serious. Last two. Confess sin. Just getting open about sin will help you be fruitful. You know, that sin that even a baby Christian could disciple you on. That, that real, honest, like, I did this. See, in our church, we believe in confession of sin. That's what we believe. Right? Brothers and sisters, we get open with each other, get our hearts cleared out so that we can be more fruitful. And then lastly, in John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. I want, to I want to create a hunger inside of you. See, he says, my food. Jesus was fed by being fruitful. That 
was his food. That, that sus- food sustains you. He says, that, that's what feeds me, baptisms. Man, a light and darkness will feed you some gratefulness in a heartbeat. You get in a light and darkness study, you'll come out of that going, honey, you are the best wife in the world. I'm a wicked man. I'm lucky to be with you. You want me to take out the trash right now? How many times? Jump. How high? How low? Sit down. You don't want to do that? Thank you, honey, babe. You know, I'm telling you. That's what a light and darkness study will do. But if you're never in Bible studies, you don't have a full understanding of all the good things you have in Christ. Philemon chapter one. You don't have a full understanding, partially understanding how good you got it. I want you to get hungry. You know, when you're hungry for something, man, you cannot wait to eat. That's why I want you to fast. Because guess what? You're going to be hungry. And when you're hungry, sometimes you're not fruitful because you, you don't really, you don't want to eat it. You know what I mean? I remember going to Russia. And they gave me this, like, very strange meal. And everybody was fired up about it. They were speaking Russian, and I was like, only black guy there in Russia, I was like, you guys have any barbecue or anything like that? And no. And this meal was called sala. And it was like a, a, like a, a very strange piece of pork um, and, a, and, a, and a, some kind of a root and a very different colored piece of bread than I'm used to eating. And uh, the brothers gave it to me. And I just, I did not want to eat it. But I had to be sold out, so I ate it. I was like, hey man, now I'm Russian. Hey man, hey man. They accepted me. But they, they kind of had to get me going to get me to eat it. Why? Because I didn't have the hunger to eat it. Yeah. Are you hungry to baptize? Don't you want to baptize? Don't you want a kid standing here saying, I used, I used to be involved in knife crime? Do you know we have people in our church right now that used to be involved in knife crime, but they've been baptized and they're sold out disciples? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Don't you want another one? Yeah. Jen Watkins has a Ph.D., you got a PhD. And never brings it up. Gets her identity from being a sold out disciple. Can you imagine what we would do with another PhD grad? We got one? We're close. I'm talking about going and baptizing one. Baptizing one. Can you imagine another Tommy Wah? Another man that wants to go out and plant a church. We got a few. Got a few. But how about an army? How about the front row filled with men that want to go plant churches? And sisters right behind them going, woo, come on, let's go. Talk about it, bro. That's what we need. Can you imagine the church getting so strong that we're now able to start a disabled ministry where we can bring in those who are blind and we can lead them up to the front where they can get the glorious seats can you imagine a church where we start really baptizing people and we can start a special needs ministry an entire region where people are devoted to taking care of people with mental illness in this country can you imagine if we had the infrastructure people we baptize enough people see the reason we can't start these ministries is because we don't have a leader We got to get hungry, yeah. hungry. We are the, we are the disciples in the 21st century. God gave the truth to us. He hid it from all these centuries. Yeah. We're the only ones, we know the truth. Yeah. He believes we are the group that can do it. He believes in us. Yeah. He believes in us. Yeah, he we got to believe in the call that God has given us. Yeah. Let's go and bear fruit, fruit that will last to God be all the glory.